Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to Game Watch. Now today I've got 10 games for you releasing in November that I think you should keep your eyes on. So grab a beer, adjust your gaming chair and relax. What do you get when you combine farming with a JRPG? Well, you end up with Farmagia, the only game where you can plant a seed that grows into a wolf. Now, the realm of Felicidad is under control of the tyrant Glaza, and it's down to Ten and his companions to fight back. A Farmagia is a person that grows monsters in the farm and controls them in battle, and there is a big emphasis on the farming aspect, as you'll have to train them to increase their strength as well as research new abilities. The combat looks relatively simple and is handled exclusively by your monsters. As with any JRPG, there'll be locations to explore, farm resources, to be collected as well as your standard boss battles. Some of you may be looking at the art style and thinking that looks familiar. Well that's because Hiro Mishima, the manga artist behind Fairy Tale, was responsible for the character and monster designs. Farmazia releases on the 1st of November on the PS5, Switch and Steam. Now there will be a physical release including a standard as well as limited edition. The latter includes a 96 page art book, bigger box and original soundtrack. And from what I can see it's an actual CD. You know, those relics we used to buy at HMV and Virgin Megastores. We've looked at a game with some light farm simulation, but what about the thrill-seeking gamers that want to build their own theme park? Planet Coaster is back in action in the form of Planet Coaster 2. You'll be able to create your very own theme park, starting from the ground up with the train, all the way up to the air with your coasters. You'll have to manage your budget and ensure your guests are having a good time whilst also keeping them safe. Fine details like having sunscreen vendors, shade to keep your guests cool as well as lifeguards will all be under your control. Or you can play on career mode where you'll have objectives as well as a budget to adhere to, as well as sandbox mode where you'll have unlimited funds on an empty plot of land. Oh, and if you're thinking about making a dangerous ride so your guests can get injured, wink wink, yeah, you can't do that. The Frontier Workshop returns so players can share their rides, coasters and theme parks online for others to enjoy. Now, Planet Coaster 2 releases on the 6th of November on the PC, PS5 and Xbox Series consoles. The game will be releasing digitally only and include a standard or deluxe edition with the standard setting you back £40 or $50. The next game we'll be looking at was built exclusively for VR and although I don't own a headset, I had to include it in my list. Metro Awakening is a story-driven adventure game with exploration, stealth as well as combat, all within the confines of virtual reality. Awakening is set in the year 2028 in a post-apocalyptic world. You'll be playing as Serda, who lives underground in the Moscow subways. He's trying to find his wife as well as the medication she needs to stay alive, but in Serda's journey he'll come across the supernatural, killer bandits as well as mutants infected by the radioactive fallout. Now it is worth noting that 4A didn't develop Awakening, the studio behind Exodus, as well as the rest in the series. The game was developed by Vertigo Games, who developed Arizona Sunshine, if that does ring any bells. Awakening releases on the 7th of November on the PS5, Steam and MetaQuest. Now it should be no surprise that the game is releasing digitally only. There is a deluxe edition which includes some in-game items as well as concept art access, and if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you can get 10% off if you decide to pre-order. After all these years of being a plumber, Mario wasn't able to stop this game from leaking. Up next is Mario & Luigi Brothership, and if you weren't aware, the ROM has leaked online, and gamers have been playing it early, you very naughty gamers. The game world known as Concordia has broken into several pieces, and it will be down to Mario and Luigi to put the islands back together. You'll be sailing across the sea on a very unique looking ship that actually looks like a floating island. The combat is turn based and really gives me Paper Mario vibes. You'll be able to use your bro attacks to launch a coordinated effort against enemies as well as power up your abilities with the use of battle plugs. You can of course expect puzzles as it wouldn't be a Mario game without them. You'll come across some familiar faces as well as some new ones and there's also been a new art direction for the brothers and I must admit they do look pretty cool. Brothership releases on the 7th of November on this Switch and in true Nintendo fashion, there will be a physical release. Up next, we've got Slitherhead, which sounds very similar to a racial slur. Clearly, Sweet Baby Inc. didn't get their hands on this one. Now, Slitherhead places you in the streets of Kaolong, and you'll be playing as Hyoki. Now, a Hyoki is a paranormal being that has no memories or physical form, but it does have a goal in hunting demonic creatures known as Slitherheads, which conveniently mask themselves as humans. You'll be borrowing the bodies of humans in order to engage in combat and disregarding them when they've been critically wounded. Similar to when my mate got too drunk before a night out, and we left them at home. This is Boca Studios' first game, so we don't have any of their previous titles to compare Slitherhead with. But the founder, Kaichiro Toyama, wrote the scripts for Silent Hill, Siren, as well as Gravity Rush, so it will be interesting to see how the story turns out. Slitherhead releases on the 8th of November on the PS4 and 5, Steam and Xbox Series consoles. You will be able to pick up a physical copy for $60, but this will only be releasing in the States. The rest of the world can pick it up digitally, with PlayStation Plus subscribers getting 10% off if you pre-order. Up next is the game I've been looking forward to the most in Dragon Quest 3 HD 
2D remake. Now try saying that 10 times in a row after having a few Captain Morgans. For those wondering why 3 is being remade first, it's because it's the prequel to 1 and 2. A warrior named Ortega left his family to take on the demonic being known as Baramos, but unfortunately this didn't go to plan. 16 years later you take control of Ortega's son and are entrusted by the king to continue your father's quest and take out the demon. You'll meet companions along the way and can fill the party of 4 players. And whilst we're talking about combat, Dragon Quest features that turn-based combat that we all love. All of the JRPG mechanics you'd expect to see like party tactics, player classes and world exploration are all here baby. Dragon Quest releases on the 14th of November on the PS5, Switch, Steam and Xbox Series consoles. Good news for the physical collectors as you will be able to pick up a hard copy. Now the first two games are currently in the works with the remakes releasing at some point in 2025. I'll definitely be covering these next year so make sure to subscribe to stay in the loop. Up next we've got Path of Exile 2, a free to play action RPG that features 6 player co-op. Now the game will feature a campaign that spans across 6 acts, 100 environments, 600 types of monsters as well as 100 bosses baby. But what else can you expect from Path of Exile? Well you'll have 12 player classes to choose from but you'll be able to combine skills from other classes to make the build truly your own. The passive skill tree is returned with over 1500 skills that you can learn and the inclusion of dual specializations and if you don't know what that means don't worry because I don't either. Once you get to the end game you gain access to 100 maps and modifiers from previous leagues. Now what's interesting is that PoE2 is completely separate from the first game and they will continue to create expansions for both of them. Your purchases will also be shared between titles and the devs have outright promised the game will never be pay to win. Can you imagine then if the devs released a pay to win audio pack where enemies can shout and do sound damage to each other? Well how about the enemies don't make any noise at all and for a measly 20 bucks you'll be able to hear them again. Only joking guys, everyone knows pay to win audio isn't a thing. Path of Exile 2 will launch on the 15th of November on the PS5, Steam and Xbox Series consoles. It will be free to play but just remember it is an early access title. Do you have the passion for aviation, soaring your way through the open air and trying not to hit any birds? If so then Flight Simulator 2024 may be the game for you. Now I've always had the impression that flight simulators were one dimensional in a sense of you fly here then you fly there and the cycle repeats itself but after watching the trailer for this game my mind has completely changed. Not only can you fly all over the world with realistic gameplay mechanics, you can also perform medical rescues at sea, remote cargo operations, aerial firefighting, search and rescue, as well as being a regular transport pilot. Now this alone sounds cool, but the graphics look amazing, and you can bet your PCs will sound like they're about to take flight when you start running this game. You'll also be able to land anywhere, exit your aircraft, and explore 27 biomes, which are all affected by seasonal changes. A new lighting system has been implemented, as well as the weather features being revamped to provide that next level of realism. Now if you'll look to the left, Flight Simulator 2024 releases on the 19th of November on the PC and Xbox Series consoles. It will be accessible day one for any of you Dirty Game Pass subscribers. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is one of the most radioactively contaminated areas on planet Earth. Scientists estimate it'll be another 20,000 years until Chernobyl will be habitable. Well, our next game Stalker 2 is based within this area. You'll be exploring the open world, jumping into gunfights and trying to uncover the secrets of the zone. The enemy's AI will do their best to get the upper hand on you and if the game is anything like the original, you will be presented with a challenge. Now there are over 30 weapons in the game and you'll be able to further customise them with the use of mods. Now everyone knows radioactivity and mutants go hand in hand and there's no exception here baby. It's not just humans that you'll have to worry about as mutants will roam in packs and feature unpredictable behaviours. Now the story is non-linear and you can steer it in your own direction with the game having multiple endings. Now the game does look amazing and I don't think my 6700 XT is ready for this nuclear battle. The devs are also working on a multiplayer mode that will be released as a free update. Stalker 2 releases on the 20th of November on the Xbox Series consoles and PC. But good news for Game Pass subscribers as you'll gain access to Stalker on day one. What do you get when you combine Sekiro based combat, Space Cats and 2D action platforming? Well that's easy, you get 9 souls. 9 souls draws inspiration from Sekiro's deflection system but incorporates it into a 2D setting. You'll be slashing, deflecting and charging your way through enemies with plenty of action as well as platforming mechanics. 9 souls is set within New Kunlun and you'll be playing as a hero named Yi. You've awoken the 9 rulers of the Forsaken Realm so it's only right that you go and take them down. Now the game has a very unique look to it, combining Eastern mythology, Taoism and cyberpunk elements to portray the world. The environments, animations and cutscenes have all been hand drawn and it shows as the game does look good. It released on Steam earlier this year and reviews were overwhelmingly positive. This is the studio's first game and they've clearly hit the ground running so make sure to keep an eye on Red Candle Games in the future. Now it releases on all consoles including Last Gen on the 26th of November. There won't be any physical copies but you can expect to pay £25 or $30. I've been your captain, Senor Dona, and if you'll take a look to the left, you'll see the like button. Make sure to tap that. Leave a comment if you've enjoyed the
the journey and subscribe for more pay-to-win audio like this, baby. 